What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited about today's episode because we're gonna be continuing our ongoing series of seed saving. That's right, we're gonna be seed saving today and we're going to be saving okra seed. This is one that we've not yet done a guide on, so I'm really, really pumped to be doing this for you guys. And it's a very easy one as well, so I don't think it's gonna be a, too long of an episode because most of the seed saving has kind of already been done for you if you follow these steps. Mother Nature does a really good job of helping you save okra seed because you're gonna be treating okra much like field corn. So before we get into the guide, I wanna tell you a little bit about this okra here because okra is something that um, it's very near and dear to my heart. It's something that I absolutely love. It's either a love, it's a love-hate thing. Um, either you love it or you hate it. I love it. It's something that I just think is such a unique vegetable. It's very underappreciated, but it really brings so much flavor and, uh, and just textural uniqueness to your dishes. And I love okra, but the thing I loved so much about this year's okra was we grew some pretty rare varieties. This right here was called Jing Orange. Very, very rare variety, very difficult to find. It's a deep orange, kind of almost like a, like a, a burnt orange color to the okra. Very, very, very beautiful. And then we also have the, uh, this is the uh, red burgundy okra. Now, none of the pods are actually their color because they're, they're dead and dry, but this was the red burgundy okra, deep purpley burgundy color, absolutely beautiful. And then we also have back here in the back of our bed, something called Star of David. Now, Star of David is a very, very rare variety of okra that um, it is, it's so much more unique than all the others. Not in necessarily the color, it's green, just like most common varieties of okra, but the shape of the pods are short and stumpy, and when you cut them open, it's actually twice as many seed cavities as a standard variety of okra. But when you cut it open, something incredible happens. It actually keeps all of the, all of the little uh, seed cavities stay intact and it actually looks just like a Star of David. And that's where it got its name. We're gonna be saving seed from these three different varieties. And like I said, the first thing you wanna do is just let them die standing. Um, it's such an easy thing to do because you just set them and forget them. The reason why you let them die standing though is because the, the okra pods have so much moisture. It's unbelievable how much moisture these pods have in them. And so one of the biggest mistakes I see people making is harvesting them when they're green big mistake. No matter how woody it is and how inedible it is, does not mean that the seeds inside are viable and, or uh, mature yet, meaning also viable, I guess. But it does not mean the seeds inside are mature. And it also does not mean that the seeds inside are dry and ready to be harvested. Big, big mistake harvesting it green. But then also what I would all see people do is it'll get really close. It'll get to like this stage right here and then they'll cut it down and take it inside. You want to wait until the pods are crispy. You want to wait for them to be firm and crispy dry. Again, I treat them just like field corn in that if you do the same thing to field corn, the same exact thing will happen. It's really unique in that uh, field corn and okra both need to be left on until they are bone dry on the plant. Because if you take them indoors, if you wait for them to be dead and then take them indoors before they're just dead and crispy completely, there's still too much moisture in those pods and too much moisture in the corn and they'll both rot and mold. And anytime you have rotten mold, it completely reduces your, your seed viability to almost 0% germination. And the worst thing is then once, uh, once mold spores are incorporated into your seed collection, unless you have extremely, uh, extremely you know, airtight bags, um, those mold spores can get in and ruin the viability of your other seeds as well. So it is extremely important to, uh, to save seeds properly. And that's why I typically will let my, uh, my plants dead dry right on the plant and let them sit dead dry for a good month and a half or so. And these have been dead dry for probably close to two months now. So we are more than fine on that. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to start harvesting. We got our clippers, we got our basket, and we're just going to start harvesting the Jing orange. Once I get all of these pulled off, I'll show you how to save seed. There's a really simple way also, come in close, I'll show you this. There's a really simple way to tell, to tell you if uh, the seed is not going to be good to save. Um, and that's by a simple squeeze test. So come on in close, check this out. So as I was clipping down these pods, I realized that there was an opportunity to uh, kind of highlight where a mistake could be made. And that's in that the pod is on the plant, the plant is dead and dry, but the pod itself is not yet dry. And this can happen because the pod was immature. You know, nearing the end of the season, there might be a immature seed pod that forms on the plant and is not yet mature, mature enough to, to dry and turn crispy, and the frost kills it off. Now, this is not a mature seed pod, and how I can tell 
is it's very, very squishy. Very squishy, very soft. And if I were to open it up, you'll see there's already rot and mold on the inside. And that's because the moisture just kind of got to the seeds. They weren't quite ready. You can tell they were just kind of nasty. Yucky, yuck. And so those are not seeds that are going to be worthwhile to save, obviously. So just by giving them a quick squeeze test, you can see if they're, if they're dry or not. And so what we're going to do is pull these down here and you can see not squishy, very, very firm. And so when we cut them open, we cut them open, you'll notice they're very, very woody, very difficult to open. But when you open them, you'll see a big difference in that the seed quality is actually, uh, it's actually retained. And that's because when the, when the pod dries on the plant, um, all the moisture leaves. And so these seeds here, while not completely dry yet, there's still some moisture. That's why we're gonna let them sit out for about two weeks. The seeds themselves are really good quality. There's no black mold spots. There's no mildew. There's, uh, all of them are pretty much the same color and consistency. And so that's a really, really good sign. A lot of squishy ones. That's what happens at the end of the year, which is why you gotta implement the squeeze test because if you don't squeeze them, you're gonna save a lot of mushy pods and that is not good, so. Give them a good squeeze and make sure you're getting good stuff. Ooh, that's a real good one right there. When they get just downright papery, that's, uh, that's a really great sign. Sometimes you can't always get them to turn downright papery though because this one, that one's a great one. That's a really, really good one. But sometimes you can't get them to be downright papery because there's just so much moisture in these pods that even when you let them dry stand, sometimes I just take brittle over, over bone dry. Now these, a lot of these are, are really good on this side. Um, and so some of these ones, eh, a little mushy. So we're gonna leave the mushy ones. Better to be safe than sorry with seed production because uh, the worst thing you can do is save save mushy seed. It's just, na it's nasty number one, but number two, even if there's a couple viable seeds in there, you're gonna possibly compromise the rest of your seed for it. So just better to err on the side of caution. I'd rather have three viable seeds than 300 moldy, nasty seeds. All right, let's get the rest of these saved. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna save the Jing orange here. And again, like I said, it's so simple. Once you get them dry, they just, they just come right out and then you just let them sit on a plate for two or three weeks until they become just bone, bone dry because right now they still do have quite a bit of moisture. If you put these in even a paper bag with not a lot of airflow, they would definitely, they would definitely rot. All right, there's that one. And then I wanna show you the Star of David. Now the Star of David is so cool. It has just so much more ribbing. This is a really good example here of just how much ribbing is on the Star of David. And very few seeds in comparison to the Jing Orange, but still worth saving nonetheless because it is such a rare variety, so unique. So there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something new. I really do hope that you try saving your own seeds. It is definitely one of the most rewarding things that you can do as a gardener because not only does it kind of close that loop and bring things all around full circle to, you know, it started with a seed, I grew a plant, now I have seed again to start another plant next year. It really brings things around full circle, but it also allows you to save money and protect biodiversity, which is so important, not only to you as a gardener, but the whole gardening community because you never know if what you saved is going to be needed later on. So I really hope that you start saving your own seeds and uh, just getting that, that gratification of doing it yourself and uh, kind of getting away from having to buy seed. But 
shameless plug, if you do need to buy seed and you don't have seed, make sure to check out mygardener.com. We just launched the 2020 seed collection. There's a ton up there. We're still, um, there's still about 50 or so varieties that are not yet in for 2020, but those are gonna be in within the next couple weeks. But if you can't wait and you want to get your hands on some seed and you got spring fever um, or you're, you're already getting ready for spring, you, may, you might be in a, uh, in a, in a part of the world uh, like Australia that uh, you know, is actually going into their spring season, you can actually go over to mygardener.com, get your seeds, only 99 cents. We ship worldwide, but uh, yeah, we're really excited about it and I hope you guys will check it out. All right, I'll catch you guys on tomorrow's episode. Remember to grow bigger, go home. We'll see you later.